You are listening to Level of Your Gaming Podcast, Episode 89, Building an Epic Game. Today we talk about building your epic game. We discuss ways to start your players out slow and build them into a larger challenge. We discuss multiple ways to gate your players and also pitfalls to avoid when building them up. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me in person, he'll build to a crescendo in any game, Jared. Good day. Good day. How are you doing today, Jared? Not bad. Yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, uh, we're, we're a couple episodes late on kind of calling these up because uh, we recorded a couple in advance, but um, we did get some emails to our uh, uh, episode on story over success. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did. We, we, did. we got one from, from Chris. Uh, and Chris, again, thank you for always writing in. You've got some really good points. Um, I like your point about uh, the author versus GM point. I know it was brought up there. It, it, you know what? It was a valid point. Um, authors do have it hard. Um, they do. And, and it was a, l- a little callous of me to be like, we've got it hard. But always remember, Chris, when I am doing this podcast, I'm trying to reinvigorate our our community. Yes, yes. And um, <laughs> make you feel like you're joining the Marines. And then, uh, and then, and then we got to Jared's blasphemy. Then we got to, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> which was one. which was Jared's uh, Jared's question about like, why why didn't we just use the eagles and you know we could just skip the whole quest and all that. Could have, Chris. I still say a volcano does not equal anti air assets. Are those guided? I think they're unguided. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I think those eagles would swoop right around. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, loved it. This this this, <laughs> was, this this was this was one of the funniest responses we ever got. So it was he, it was fantastic. He, he did he did it in a in a, in a, in a well two named points but i think there were probably multiple points in here but he goes first the eagles are not slaves slavery is something they do in mordor not in gandalf 2.0 can 2.0 can do it uh he <laughs> he's got a point you know gandalf wasn't uh he wasn't really that powerful wasn't really as powerful as uh gandalf's kind of sucks um, oh did i just blast me <laughs> again um and then your other one was that Sora does in fact have anti-air. He's got a volcano, which the volcano could also double as chemical warfare. Uh, talk about how Sam and, uh, and Frodo barely made it. Uh, well, even though the, the army was being uh, kind of handled by Aragon's army. And then you said there's the Air Force uh, of uh, nine flying creatures uh, beating riders who have the power to bring down the entire freaking city just, uh, just by staring at it sideways. And then you also said the Eagles did... I did well in their in the Battle of the Five Armies uh, when they were when, when they were like the American Air Force Corps going up against the Bolivian Air Force. So, so it's either American Air Corps because uh, it was the Army Air Corps. Oh, it's 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 it, the American Army Air Corps going up against see, the Bolivian. Then he's historically correct because in World War II it was the Army Air Corps going up against the Bolivian Air Force. My Bolivian. grandfather was actually part of the Air Corps. Uh, of my mother's uh, I'm, I'm just not great at reading out loud. You are Sorry. really not great at no, it. No, I'm really terrible at it. You should probably let the professional teacher do that. Because <laughs> um, I have literally read from books in front of, like, classes of students. But we've never seen them up against the Nazgul. And as they show up in the Battle of the, the, of the Black Gate, the Nazgul have been suddenly retasked to go squash Frodo. Uh, who has just claimed the ring and made Sauron unaware of his of his intelligence failures? I love that part. <laughs> it's just it's it's it, it keeps going. It's so great. You had my wife rolling laughing because she's a bigger um, Lord of the Rings, and also this is from my wife. Uh, my wife is on your side, so she is also a Lord of the Rings fan. Um, she also believes what I said was blasphemy. So she wanted you to know that you have an ally in, in this house and that this house does not uh, blast me Lord of the Rings. So just just so you know, you're not alone. I just love these other points. There's also the fact that had Frodo flown into Mordor and failed to cast the ring in, there would have been no Smeagol to inadvertently and probably potentially fulfill the quest. Frodo claims the ring. Uh, someone Boromir beheads him, uh, takes the ring, 
Aragorn beheads him. The king <laughs> takes the ring. Gandalf burns Aragorn down the shoes, takes the ring. Sauron shows up and squashes Gandalf to a pulp, takes the ring, and it's all over until Sam beheads Sauron. And be- You're banned from reading. Oh, we, because Sam is a fucking badass when you've harmed You're never him. doing this again. <laughs> no, never again. And become the new dark green lord. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop you here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do the lead part of this. <laughs> Anyways, you you just you just go down this great great path. Great email. I freaking loved it. Allie loved it. Aaron loved it. I loved it. Thank you for it so much for Thank writing you. again. It means a lot. Uh, we 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 just got a huge kick out of it, uh, and the humor was was gold. It was golden. Um, golden, I say. And then yes, you were doing correct penance and reading the uh, the twelve books of Middle Earth. Uh, which... <laughs> Uh, since we've engaged in this blasphemy. Um, (laughs) uh, We also got an email from Gary on the exact same episode. Yep. um, And he talked about uh, story over success. He talked about doing the big quest and how um, he's had success with that before. He's running kind of a mild quest. He's had better success with that these days. Um, He's now currently thinking of starting up a fantasy game where the characters start in a single city, um, no big quest to speak of. Uh, and he's going to keep them there in that city uh, until the characters get to like level three, I think is what he said in the email. Um, and this kind of spawns the uh, the question for our, our it does. episode today, which is how do you progress a a game? How do you, how do you make that progression feel uh, natural? How do you take you from the, 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 the confined city and go to the, the wild flowing fields of your Middle Earth? It won't be Middle Earth, not in my games. I mean, it won't be Middle Earth, but you know, you know what I mean, Jared. Because fuck Tolkien. What? Blasphemy again? <laughs> no, I don't say that about Tolkien. He did write an absolutely amazing environment, and uh, I... I I when I use Elven language in my games, I actually use Sidiri, Sidreal, the Elven language of of Tolkien that he like wrote. By the way, if you hear kids in the background, um, I live in a neighborhood. It's got a lot of kids. They are they are squealing loud. They are squealing loud today. But you know what? Their kids let them play. So I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run out there like an old man and be like. Stop! You're playing. We're podcasting right We're now. We're podcasting right now. No, they, they're good kids. You know, they play dumb pranks like, like we used to do. <laughs> like they've ding dong or ding dong da- uh, dashed, and mm-hmm. I caught them. You caught them. They're fast. They're not that fast. That's actually quite impressive, Jay. <laughs> Is it because I'm fat? Yes. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Bro! <laughs> a zing. <laughs> that wasn't a zing. That was a stab. That wasn't a zing. It was a stab right in my fucking heart. I think I'm too fat to catch you. I used to tackle gangbangers for a living. I'm fast when I want to be. Stop looking at my belly! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness the end of a of a twenty plus year friendship. Okay. <laughs> you're literally here for it. Okay, but so no. thank you for joining us for our last <laughs> episode <laughs> ever. <laughs> Aaron will be leaving now. Um no, okay, so back to our topic. Um so Gary, the first thing that I, I in, in to all storytellers, um, uh, GMs, DMs, masters of ceremony, st- uh, crafters of the lands, whatever you, uh, whatever t- mother, uh, if you want to go by, um, my first thing is pre-planning, always pre-planning, and I'm gonna say it, and I've said it a thousand times, and I'm sorry, uh, KYP, KYP, do you, is your group gonna go for it? Because I have. Fortunately for me, I am in a group that will totally go for it. I'm in a group that would love the rags to riches story, right? I have played in a group that that would have never have flown, ever. Yeah, if your players are like... If they like to kill, crush, and destroy, they're trust me, they're, they're not into the rags to riches. 
I mean, the closest you got to the rags to riches stories was the Scion game. That Elders. You ran. Elders. It was a rags to riches. Well, you guys started with, off with the, with the other group is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Was but the even Scion that, they, 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 they were Scions. They, they essentially the – think of like under Hercules. Like, but you were, you were dragging them along with the carrot the entire way. I mean, it was effectively <laughs> like go here, go what do this, go do that? this, go here. What and, you know, there there's – Horrific games I wrote. It's it's fine, but I mean, it we we fine. were we were scions in that game. There was really no need to progress to the next level. No, there were there was no. They they just wanted to play power and let power mm. run through the game. Yep, and that's what I gave them. Now your audience. Um, so analyze your group. Is your group ready for a rags to riches story? Do, will they be hooked on that? So that's something that they are going to enjoy. If it is, fire it up. If it isn't, <clears throat> if you don't think this is going to fly, don't try to fly the kite. So um, after that part, after you've made a go, no go decision, um, and let's say you're still at a go, because um, the rags to riches, I'm telling you, there's, there's just there's a lot of people out there that, that they don't want to play rags to riches. They, they don't want the hero's journey. There's a lot of people out there that just want to kill, crush, destroy, and, and maim. And <clears throat> and as we've talked about earlier on this podcast, dozens of episodes ago, you know, murder hobos, which is a and d thing that I still don't. I understand the concept now. Someone explained it to us via email. Um, it was either Gary or Chris, I actually think. I, th- I think it was Gary, actually, who did uh, explain it. D- who explained murder hobos. I still don't understand the motive and why that is such an attractive thing in D&D that, like, 900 memes are made about it. Um, so the one thing that uh, once you've got that no uh, go, no-go decision that I want you to take a peek at is um, is is exactly actually kind of what Aaron said. Um Build your epic story first. Now you're gonna take you're you're gonna need some pre-prep time for this. So you might want to run a small campaign that really isn't very taxing on you uh, while you're building this one because this one will take some taxing. It will take some time um, because you're gonna have to pre-plan your epic campaign before you even make your small campaign. The big one has to be made first because the little one should leave clues should have hints to the larger one upcoming. Why? Because it'll make you look like a magician. All your people will be like, oh my God, you, we, we encountered this evil wizard back when he was like a, a guy at a bar doing this, and, and we gave him the advice of do something with your life, and this is what he's done! Well, when you, when you say that, I mean, so uh, part of the advice we gave was in the email back to you was, to start, you know, you're going to start small. Make sure that the game is contained enough that when the players finish it, if you're going to have this larger story, and to know the larger story, you don't need to have the next 82 sessions. No, right no. You, you just need to have a, a general idea. You need to have a good idea of who they're trying to, you know, who they're going to go after or yep. their organization. Uh, we, we've talked about that before, about organization building. Um. You need to t- you need to know how the end of this ties into that organization, and you need to have some major plot points probably figured out along the way. Things that you want the players to eventually strive to hit and achieve as they work towards your big eighty-two game epic, okay? And forces them to kind of go out, and then you start thinking about it where the players then the the reason why that formula works so well is that once the players execute your story, they've got the the piece that connects them to the large story, so that it feels organic mm-hmm. moving into the large story. Um, two, you're going to run this big 82-game epic. If the threat isn't so pressing right now, or maybe there's a lot of things that come out of your little story, you can then have the players sort of kind of craft their own way as they move into it. And maybe you keep dropping in other hints that you know lead to this bigger piece for each little thing that the players end up doing um again just think you kind of like but also make it where if the player said you know what this was really fun we liked playing in the city of ooga booga 
And that is the worst city name you've ever. That's come the up worst with? city name. I was like, I was going to call the city of Kashmir. Okay. That, but that's a cloth. But it works as a city name. It does. Okay, so we're in the city of Kashmir. Okay, so you're in the city of Kashmir. Is in- this Kashmir? <laughs> Seinfeld episode for all those who don't. Uh, what's this spa? <laughs> it's a Seinfeld episode for those of you who've never seen Seinfeld. But the uh, great show. The, the the beauty of doing that is that if if you have a have a story in Kashmir where the players kind of move into it by chance. And when I say move into it by chance is, um, again, I don't know what your general motivation when you start your characters off are. Uh, so, you know, go back to our gathering episode, go back to the session zero episode and figure out how you're going to bring your characters together. What drives them. Okay. KYP, like Jared said, and build your little story around those goals. Yes. Okay? One th- level one through level three, Level one through level five. I don't know how long. I know that in AD and D things take a lot longer to level up. So maybe level one through level three doesn't take that long. Here's my thing, and, and you know, forgive me for interrupting, but um, my thing is don't don't restrict it to level. Don't go when it feels right. Yeah, just if, if they're level freaking one and they're they're ready to fly. I don't that go. Level is just a number, Gary. Level is just a number. You know, it, 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 it's, it is when it is ready for the story, for the characters. Have they reached that, that uh, point for the players? Are they ready to expand outside the city with respect? You know what I mean? Respect for the wilderness? Respect for the danger that's out there? Are they ready to fly like little birds from a coop? No, that, that 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 that's perfectly said. It's you want them to feel like like we are ready to take on a bigger adventure. You want the players to feel it, not the character level to, to dictate. Yeah. It. And the reason why you want the players to feel it is, again, we 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 can draw straight from the experience of the investigation game here. I, I, I'll go back to the very first game that I ran for you guys. I was going to make it a zombie game at the end of the game. That was my original plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I realized had I made it a zombie game or had I turned it into the whole town's full of zombies, all of you would have gotten in a car, driven away. Yes. And I would have been like, there goes that game. We would never have the investigation series. It would have died right there. Okay. Instead, I made it a monster, one monster, one monster. Okay. And the players felt motivated to stop the monster. And every time beyond that, I said, this is the formula. It needs to start out as mundane and become a monster. Okay? Because if you feel like you are, if you feel like you've been thrown in the deep end of the pool, there's an often time that you're just going to swim or get out of the pool and be like, no, I'm done. This is, this is way too much. Mm-hmm. Okay? Your players are going to do that, not because your players are uh, maliciously trying to tank your game, but because your players are... Uh, like I'm not ready for this. So, so one of my one of my things is is uh, when <clears throat> when your players start thinking, because that's one of my things about uh, players is, is unpredictability. It's chaos theory. If I could, I'd talk like Jeff Goldblum, but he's such a beautiful <laughs> orator, I can't even begin to compare. Um, so, chaos theory. Which is players. It's not actually. That's very chaos theories, butterfly effect. But um, <laughs> either way, moving on. This is Jared trying to sound like Jeff Gold, sound smarter than he actually is. <laughs> Which is not very smart. <laughs> um, it's two insults today. You're, I know. You're you just <laughs> called me stupid and you called me fat. Like, what? Not even 10 minutes ago, you called me fat. <laughs> Again, like I said, this is our last podcast, so I'm just letting Aaron's them all go right now. Just letting them go, let them fly. He's like, you're dumb, you're fat. <laughs> Your job sucks. <laughs> but, okay, so <clears throat> your players are going to try to jump out of the, the out of the pool into the ocean very quickly. It's the nature of players. Um, I, I have found it's the spirit of adventure that, 
and even rests in players that even are wanting the hero's journey because they've been told time and time again that the hero's journey doesn't start until you leave the first, the opening city. You know, I, I loved the Dragonlance novels um, when I was a kid. I read all of them, um, which is odd for me because I typically don't read fantasy. Well, let's grow older. Excuse me. Not enough coffee. Um, and we, Aaron and I just ate like a ton of Polish food, um, which is very like nappy time afterwards. <laughs> very heavy. Um, so your players are going to try to escape very quickly. They're going to think like, even though we're, we're level zero heroes, we're ready to leave the city. We've got, we've got a stick and two copper coins between us. We're ready for this main adventure. That's when we'll start growing, right? The, the, the trick is, is to let them out, let them realize the dangers that are out there. So don't try to keep them confined to a city, okay? That, that's my recommendation. A region would be more appropriate, okay? Because what I'm giving them, essentially, so think of it like a, a target, Okay, so I got my center is the is the city. And this is where there are appropriate level challenges. Okay? This is where they're gonna start to grow. And then I've got my outer ring outside of that. Those are higher level challenges. Very dangerous for them at this current stage. You know, it's it's oh, I wanna go to grandmother's house to go deliver some berries but she lives in ring two well in ring one i can i can get by with an axe handle and two copper coins out here in the wilds there are packs of wolves right an axe handle isn't going to do much especially if those wolves are hungry it's not a it's not an overwhelming threat it's not like Oh my god, we will never get past these packs of wolves out here. So you're here. like building MMO zones here? Go fuck yourself. You know what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Did you just roll over and eat your <laughs> shitty <laughs> So you're just building MMO zones? I didn't say boars. I said wolves, and they're natural. <laughs> well, if you had gone out the west gate, you would have found the boars. Bro. <laughs> you can go home after this episode. <laughs> and he's just sitting there laughing. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so outside in zone two is 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 now now why you have the the regions um, being a little bit more stressful because when your players leave for the larger quest, they should feel like as the farther they go, the harder the challenges will get, and this will shape them. Because when they first go on that adventure out to Granny's house to deliver the berries, right? And they've got an axe handle. And you've got to have them fight the wolves. They've got to fight the wolves. They've got to be a little bit terrified of the wolves. So then when they go back to the safety of the city, right? Or the town, okay, where there's walls and armed guards, right? That stand at the, at the doors. They go, you know what? Those wolves don't fuck with that guard with the sword. Maybe we should buy swords. Let's... Let's get some money to get on the dope ass Disney train to get on the fun fucking part of the game. But because that's what you're thinking right now. Aaron's looking at me with this devilish grin, just waiting for another reason to stab me. <laughs> like a cat who just ate the canary. That's the look on his face right now. That's actually not a bad way to limit your players from leaving the city. Well, it's it's because you can't. You can't box them in. You try to box them in. Trust me, they're gonna break down. To to quote Glef, George, the Goldblum guy, Jeff Goldblum. They're gonna they're gonna break down barriers violently, dangerously. Sometimes they are going to find a way out because they don't want to be constricted by a single city. Sure, but okay, so it's it's role playing. It's it's not a it's not an MMO. Um, they well, can walk out that gate if they want to. There's an endless world of possibilities. The thing is, is that you need a secondary level of barrier. Okay, th 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 this is where KYP really comes in. Okay, 
Why are you giving me a sneer now? <laughs> I am giving you a sneer. <laughs> this is why KYP comes in. Because go go back to, to your other group of players who didn't really like the hero's journey, who didn't like the progression no, of the game. Okay? They needed the they they needed the fence that's basically, you know, the MMO fence on the outside of the city. Okay? Because if not, they would have just gone off on a beeline in the wrong direction. Okay? If you treat this like you're gathering episode one, the first game session, all that stuff, unless you've given your players cause to leave the city mm -hmm. to solve their problem, the likelihood that they're going to leave the city is very, very low unless you have zero engagement. Yes, that is true. As long as you keep engagement high in the city and you make sure your city is authentic, that is one of the points that you got to be like, your city has got to be good. It's got to be good. And when, when, there, when, I say, good. when I say authentic, go back to our prep episode because you don't need to know every sewer system, every, you know, every house, everything. Like there's too much in a city, okay? Especially if your city's big. The city's big. It's it's actually great to have areas of mystery. They're like, we've never been to the West End neighborhood. I wonder what it's like. But there's so much that they can go do. And then just have enough, you know, detail, NPC knowledgeable detail that can be transferred to any NPC to get them sort of leaning back in the right direction. Okay? because But if your players do get it through their head that we're, we got to leave the city to figure out this problem... That's where Jared's MMO gate thing kind of actually works very well. Stop calling it an MMO gate thing. It kind of is, though. It's not. Like, in here are level one monsters, outside this ring here. Oh, level... my God. No. <laughs> because in MMO, there will be an invisible barrier where you'll just be running against. No. I don't know. I've never played MMO. It's just like what World of Warcraft, like you know. You I know. I've, you know how long I played World of Warcraft? I played it for three hours back in the day. I was still in college. I played it for three hours. I ended up getting drunk for one of those hours, and then coming back and trying to play while drunk for the next hour. I spent one whole hour waiting for people to come find me. And then there's a uh, yeah, that, that's terrible. Uh, but then there's the. But it, this isn't like a video game where like the video game has like the gates like in an open world game. Right. Okay. Where like, you know, you, you run into it and it's like, it's like, no, you haven't finished the stuff over here. <laughs> like, 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 like Mr. Man just standing there in his suit. Like, sorry, can't let you into the, uh, the jungle level because uh, you haven't finished everything in the desert level. That's true. Okay. That's, that's a video game. In an MMO, at least you could, you could go to the worst place in the game. You get, creamed yeah so your your situation is sure you can venture out of the city but i'm gonna eat you with the wolves i'm gonna eat you okay so okay and let me know when you're done with your points because i have something to postulate okay to the world sure so but what i'm what i'm trying to say is you know if you've done your due diligence especially in the early part of the game and again you you asked about random encounters other things like this if you leave the city, do a random encounter. Absolutely. Do a random encounter and, you know, make it higher than their level should be able to handle. Make it so it's threatening. Make it so they have to leave the encounter in a threatening way. Yeah, because you know who hangs outside of cities? Bandits. Okay. But perhaps the players are, like, dead set. Like, oh, man, he's putting more roadblocks in front of us to get out of this city. Like listen if, to your players. If your players you feel that pulse. If your if the pulse starts moving, we got to get out of the city. Okay, it's time to retool, rethink, and get yourself a path out of the city <laughs> and to your main quest because the birds are ready to leave. They're ready to leave. They they've had it with the city. They 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 feel confident enough in their abilities to leave the city because the scariest part is that first step. But now it's been the player's choice to make the first step. We left on this epic quest because we wanted to, not because the storyteller told us, and that's magic. But yeah, and again, you go back to the KYP side of things. If you have players that are interested in following or understanding the story or executing quests within the story, especially in your gathering piece there, if you've planned out... Again, it, it, Jared's right. It shouldn't be done by levels. It should be until you get to this plot point, 
where it dictates that you probably should leave the city, okay? I believe this is the plot point that ties you into other stuff that's outside the city. Or this is enough of a plot point where you join the blue, uh, you know, barrage brigade or something like that. <laughs> the what? I'm going for some alliteration here. Okay. Okay. And so the blue barrage brigade, uh, you, you, you've heard about them in the town. Suddenly, you know, you've caught their eye by doing whatever you were supposed to be doing. Okay. And somebody approaches you about it. Okay. And then their whole thing is we're going to keep doing stuff around the town. And your players are like, no, nah, fuck that. We're, we're, we're pretty hot shit. We just took care of that uh, that that dude over there as part of this other quest. Was he a hobo? Like, yeah, shit. they murdered the murder hobo. See, oh, okay, the- there we go. We tracked down and killed a <laughs> a serial killer hobo. <laughs> and then that's so, a story. But your players are like, you know, let let's do some more. So I mean, when you finally get into that area that will branch you out, you know, be be willing, regardless of their level, to move in those directions and let your players start moving. Yes, absolutely. You have something you want to postulate. Uh, so I'm postulating to the, to our community as a whole. Um, I've actually, so for another episode, I was planning on doing um, a, a game session with the guys uh, for a system called Blades in the Dark. Moved past that. I decided I didn't want to do it. Right? Found a different system that I'm going to that I'm going to throw at them. One that I'm really excited. Um, mainly I, I ditch Blades of the Dark because like trying to figure out just like a simple stabbing action seems like complicated fucking calculus. Determine this, determine that. Your your action should be a conversation. Like, oh god, no. Just make me roll dice. <laughs> Too complicated. But I'm I'm sure because I, I got to the point of where I actually went and watched YouTube tutorials on how to play and I still wasn't understanding. Oh, well, yeah. Like, I'm like, uh, what? He's he's determining the difficulty level and then reversing the flow of the... Poli- what? <laughs> it was very confusing. Um, a little too much for me. Um, not to say anything bad about that system because I still think uh, the, the book, the materials is elegantly uh, done. I really like their story side to it. It's just their mechanics are a little bit too... <laughs> For me, um, considering they're the system that's the just say yes, but like when it came down to combat, like holy shit, I just do a lot of shit, <laughs> just like whoa. Um, so one of the things that I postulated, uh, and and you know one of the things that I've I've always envisioned doing, I've never actually uh, done it, but for this game I had planned it out because a lot of this story is actually done. I even did maps for it. Um, but starting off the characters as uh, children, using an episodic game style. Neighborhood kids, you know what I mean? If you're starting off in a city, the kids that you are with in the neighborhood, right, are your friends. Aaron and I literally are an example of this. We have been friends for 20 plus years, and we lived in the same we area. We friends by proximity, most likely. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's what we yeah. were. That's how it started. Our, our, we met at swim mm-hmm. lessons. Right? Because our moms are like, well, swim lessons. Here's the local swim gym. You know? I don't know what and we stayed friends because we have common interests. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but starting off as kids can can build a, a it's, it's going to be a different experience for your players. Because suddenly, every adult is a huge threat. <laughs> but not every adult's going to kill you. <laughs> Most adults don't kill kids. Um when there is no more, it, 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 it's a way to really go from level zero to level three. And and what I would recommend, if you want to, if you want to take this idea and run with it, one small story at level zero, right? Terror in the treehouse. I don't know something small that they can do as kids where it's a formidable threat. It starts off the neighborhood is not even where you leave. You know what I mean? It's not like, well, here's your city walls. The neighborhood. You don't leave the neighborhood. You don't know what's out in the big city. You don't have any copper coins. Mom won't let you go past, you know, I don't know, Cow Street, because mom will whoop your ass. It's an interesting thought. Hold hold on. Let let me keep going. 
one little episode as, as young children. Episode two, you know, teenager, middle school years. So early teens. And hell, even start off there. Next one, teenager level, right? We're now young. We're rebellious. We now run this neighborhood and we go out in another neighborhoods. Maybe, the, maybe as kids, they started a gang. I mean, that, you know, not like we sell dope on the, on, on the street corner gang, like a medieval gang where it's like we protect our neighborhood and make sure that other gangs don't come around here stealing tomatoes from the vendors. You know, think West Side Story. Don't, don't think like <laughs> training day, okay? <laughs> That's what I want you to think, all right? And again, this builds up the character experience. It creates moments of, of, of bonding, right? We're still in the neighborhood. We're still in the city. Then we're young adults, right? 20 years old, somewhere in there. Actually, technically in, in medieval period, you're a young adult at like 16. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Progressing through age with three small stories really could set a different tone for your game, separated from other games, and really start feeling like that adventure started here, we started off as children together fighting what we thought was something in the treehouse. Turned out to be a raccoon. Scratched up Timmy real bad, right? And now we have become the seven kings of Althator because yada yada, right? Holy shit, when we started this game, we were kids. We played children, and now we are this. It's the ultimate level zero heroes to epic campaign quest. And what it does is it, it sorry, I just like popped Jared the mic. just cry chop the mic. Just <laughs> I talk with my hands. It's, it's a thing. Um, and I'm not even Italian, uh, but I do. I talk with my hands. Um, I, I welcome you to do it or to try it in this sense, because it sounds like you're really wanting to try this level zero hero, you know? Start off with, like, 10-year-olds. You know what I mean? Really go for it. Expand on the idea. Because when you start off, if you want to do level zero heroes in the truest of ways, look at most books that go with level zero heroes. You know what I mean? They're not mid-adults. They're almost children. Frodo isn't that freaking old. He's, he's all about, like, stealing old man McCreary's corn. Like, he's not like, oh, man, got to get to my nine to five. Shit. So here's my counter to you. On counter. This. Um, and this is actually a point that was brought up by my friend Tom. Or, well, we, we know Tom, but. Um, th- I would ask which Tom, but they both their last names end with the same initials. So they, they, they both start colored hair initial. Tom or not colored hair Tom? Not colored hair Tom. My, okay. my, my previous roommate. Gotcha. That one. He, he brought up an interesting point. Um to the last episode that we uh, that we had released, which was I was we were giving examples of social situations. He actually listens to the episodes? Um, he listens to some of them. Oh, um, that's so sweet. And uh, usually does while he's like taking his dog out for exercise. Gotcha. Um, but so he, he was he was it. listening to it, and we were talking about the point because like okay, well you know if you don't get around to the rest of the episode, here's what it was basically about. Just explain it to him. We were playing board board games, and. He talked about how it's very hard to role play an experience or a situation and fill in a gap for something that you're not good at. And so the thing that you wouldn't be good at here is that unless you are a younger listener, you probably don't remember a lot of how you acted when you were younger Mm -hmm. to be able to fill in the gap in experience. You probably remember some of it. Agreed. Okay, but you're going to be playing a child with an adult's mind. Agreed. So to an extent, you need experienced players to to pull that off. You need to be very experienced in playing the 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 child or a character that is younger than their age. I mean, you're probably gonna have characters who probably could fit into the teenager role much better than then. Yeah, start off. I mean. But all I'm doing is walking them to start off at a, at a lower than, you know, like we're, we're 16 years old. Our father has told us to go marry our own wives and, and 
get our own fields. What you could do is you could do something where the first quest or the first thing that comes up in the town um, is with characters that are underdeveloped for level one. Meaning, like, you've restricted the character creation that make a character that feels like this, and then after the... And then you could basically explain, because it's session zero stuff. After these events, I'm going to let you level up to level one. Right, because I just... You know what? It, it, it's like, otherwise you get a group of level one fighters, right? How do they become fighters? Are they all going to be part of the city guard? Because unless you're part of the city guard, you're a farmer. But th- 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 this gives you the the explanation for it. In the 7C game that I'm playing run by Tom, he effectively did this. You get uh, the first edition of 7C, you get so many points to create your character. Mm-hmm. Um he basically said, okay, 25 of those points you don't get until you get to I this like part it. of the game. So we we went through our session zero first night, and then we got to indulge in the other 25 points. And the purpose, I think, was to make a character that is that fits exactly in with your backstory at this yes. moment. And then these points will let you round this character out into the fighter that they are or are going to be. Love so it. So everything about your character is is who I was and then who I get to become. Love it. Okay. Now you have to have really committed players who want to do this because I'm going to tell you right now, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have players who are going to go, Oh, by the way, I'm going to purchase this skill. I'm going to purchase this thing. I'm going to do this because I know that once we hit level one, these are very valuable to me as a level one character. Yeah. You have to watch character creation very closely. It is. It's very, very tricky, Mm -hmm. but because some of the things that they may purchase have nothing to do with it. And again, I don't know how this works on D and D stat sheet, um, especially an AD and D stat sheet for you, Gary, but that could be something that you could do too. If you just would like to kind of start the adventure at level one or even start the adventure pre level one, have something bigger at level one, and then that gates them into the higher levels there. It also gives them investment in the city that they start in. It does. It does. When you start off in a neighborhood, one section of the city, you know, we, we lived in West end of the city, you know I mean? Like there, there's a pride to that. We, we, we started off in the West in the poorest area of the city. We were farmers, you know, and now we are Kings, you know, and, and we rallied the people. But I, I urge you to go back to our prep episode to kind of get some more details into like how do you transpose the the information amongst different people. Like if you're going to do a gathering area, if you are going to do stuff strictly within the city, because you did ask about random encounters and stuff, anything that you want them to do in the city between up to the start of your bigger quest outside the city, plan it. And here's here's I, I guess my final point with with the city is you got to make it the city a story. Don't skimp on that opening city. Okay, you got to make and when when I when I'm going to try to in, encourage you and inspire you, try to make a Gotham. You know what I mean? That place is full of stories. Every alley you turn down is one of crime. And yeah, if the players never left that city, they would never be bored or want for more. If you create, you know, Haven from Dragonlance was the place that they started off with. It was like. Oh, this is a pretty cool chai town. Like, uh, I could live here for the rest of my life. Gives the store, gives the players zero incentive to to adventure or explore besides be farmers. Uh, make the story a living uh, a living organism that breathes. You know, there are times of darkness and times of light. If your players pick up on something, some seedy underbelly of the city or something like that, your players want to explore more of that. Welcome it. Welcome it, because that's more stuff that the players can do in there. Jared's right. Make the city super compelling, okay? And you don't need to have every building no, moved down. No, that is not a requirement. Re- re- react to your pl- not, n- first game session. Just try to think about which direction they're going to go. Have it, have enough of an answer in your head that I you could drop a map. Focus on to. stories, not on maps. Yes. Just, just, just know enough so you could react to your players. After that... You'll know which way they're going. React accordingly. Focus on stories, not on maps. <laughs> That's what I'm standing on. I like it. Thank you.
Do you have anything else you want to add to this one? You said you're a dick? No. Sorry. Sorry. This one, I, I owe Jared quite an apology and a milkshake. <laughs> Why? So you get more fat for your slings and arrows? We went to that Polish deli, noticed that I did not even buy one punchki. Okay? They looked so good. They're amazing punchkis there. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, anyways, that's going to wrap us up here for today. Uh, if you think I was too harsh on Jared, please <laughs> let us know. Uh, level Up Your Gaming Podcast at gmail.com or uh, facebook.com slash level up your gaming. You can also comment on the YouTube episodes. So smash that like button. And uh, Gary, we hope we, we were able to help you out a little bit here. We hope the email gives you a little bit of inspiration as well. Um, and uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the podcast. If you're not already subscribed, um, you can write in with your own questions to us. Um, also, present it to a friend, present it to a player. Uh, you know, some of you want to get into GMing. This is the type of podcast that we want to be able to give new GMs you know, experience to, and you'll be able to bring our entire wealth of experience and knowledge from our, our base to you as well. So, anyways, that's going to wrap us up for this week. So, for Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week, everyone.